Good morning, sunshine. How you feeling? Good morning. Um, <laughs> Bright and early. I'm feeling that morning. <laughs> feeling that morning for sure. But uh, we here. How are you feeling? So far, so good. You know, I've had my tea. I'm sipping on some fix it juice right now. Life is good. I can't complain. Love this for you. We love this. <laughs> <laughs> love this. You know what? Today on the Tan Line, we have none other than the Makai Curtis. And thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to chit about this and chat about that. Because, you know, we have a lot going on. Like right now, you're starring in this highly anticipated show that everybody's talking about. We're coming up on the season finale. And I've got questions that need answers. Uh, hopefully I got the answers for those questions. <laughs> I hope so. If not, you better come up with something and make it quick, you know? <laughs> I got you. I got you. Let's get into it. What's up? Look, being a part of this franchise, how has it been gelling with the cast and finding your own voice? Because, I mean, you're up with some heavy hitters and you're carrying your weight and you're making your presence known. Like, how has that been for you to say, I'm on this set, I'm here, they're going to feel me, they're going to know me, this is what's up? That's exactly the goal I kind of uh, stepped onto this project with. It's It's been one, fulfilling to, you know, also hear someone else say that, I guess, actually conveying what I, you know, attempted to on screen. It's, too been fun, uh, and it's been a challenge as a performer, as an actor, to be on a set with so many, like you said, heavy hitters, so many people who are, you know, masters of the craft. Um, as, as somebody younger in this industry, getting to just sit back and watch and observe all of that, uh, and hopefully, you know, take little bits and pieces to add to my little Duffy and tool bag of um, performance tools and whatnot. It's been enjoyable. It's been a learning curve. It's been a process. Um, and I'm just enjoying the ride of getting to do what I love on such a, you know, such a big platform and get to tell such a story and be part of such a, a franchise and a powerhouse of the culture. Absolutely. A powerhouse indeed. <laughs> and, and, you know, and when you're talking about being on the set with Masters of the Craft, how did you know that you wanted to take your passion of the arts, the passion of acting, and make it a career? Um, that's, that's, a, that's a really good question because it, it was kind of up in the air for a little while for me in terms of, you know, this is something I've always known that, that I wanted to do. I've always enjoyed it. Um, but for a while, it was kind of one of those things that I, I didn't necessarily see enough of myself to realize how tangible it was. Right. Um, um, and, you know, just just over time after hearing, you know, people when I was way younger saying, you know, he needs to be on TV, he needs to be on TV. And just following kind of the, the gut passion I've had for, you know, make, making people laugh and, and entertaining people uh, along with talking my parents into moving halfway across the country when I was 12. <laughs> so I'm uh, let me around and holler at y'all right quick. Now listen, feel me on this. <laughs> right. All right, so boom, I got this idea, right? Yo, right, like, boy, go sit down somewhere, what? <laughs> <laughs> but no, nah, you know, they they believed in it. They saw the the, the seed um, and they began to water and cultivate it. And, you know, that's, that's how we got to where we are now. So I'm forever grateful for my parents for... Uh, believing in the in the talent and the in the anointing on my life i'm forever grateful to sasha and courtney and 50 for handing me this baton to you know continue this legacy that they've built and again i'm just enjoying it all taking it all in you no know, you mentioned your parents and the support group you see a lot of people come into this industry and they get sucked in into this deep hole you know because people aren't really on their team we always have people in the circle that may not necessarily be in our corner and it's for mm -hmm. a season and we have to learn how to uh, associate who is with which purpose and which season. How important is it that you do have that core, your family, to keep you grounded? I mean, because you got a lot of lights, camera, action flashing right now, sir. <laughs> Take out that trash uh, and come up in here and practice these man. lines. <laughs> no, but that, you know, that's the, that's the balance that, you know, my parents have always kept with me as long as all of my siblings who do this all of my my entire family is kind of in the entertainment industry but you know it's always been the balance of this isn't you know this isn't what you are this is what you do um at the end of the day I still go home to my to my family and my parents my dogs and I enjoyed that you know I'm, I'm Kanan or a character when I'm on set when I you know when I need to be and when I'm at home I'm a Kai, I'm with my people and I'm enjoying myself. And 
that's kind of just you know the balance that you need i feel like is a is a harmonious balance that needs to be struck everywhere because i mean we're kind of seeing it with this character that i'm playing now is it's 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 a world and it's a person in some ways similar but in a lot of ways very starkly different than i am and you know there's kind of just the 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 there's no need for the, the two to kind of transfer over. There are days where it's a little harder to come out of the mindset I had to get into to be on set that day. But again, that kind of just goes to the support system I have around me who can kind of pick up on that, and, uh, you know, just bring me out of those 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 holes and, and days at times. Right. And I'm glad you mentioned that because I wanted to ask, you know, during this pandemic, we were all forced to sit on this island. And sometimes the Ooh. level of creativity is harder to tap into. Like, this is the most mm -hmm. I've ever spent time with self. So some stuff I was mm -hmm. like, all right, girl, we like this. We're going to keep this. Some stuff, not so much. We got to work on this and that. Um, but oh, yeah. when you're trying to find that level of creativity and to hone in on your craft, how is it that you were able to do that and to be able to zone from Makai to Canaan, that on and off switch when you need it? Um, it's got to be tough as, as an artist. Um. I think I think there there are certain times where, uh, you know, actually I'll say this: there are times while I'm playing Kanan or any character, with any character really, there has to be pieces of it that you relate to, in in terms of your your actual self and the experiences you've had. Um, so that's, you know, how I've been able to strike the balance. This kind of this switch in my head where I can, you know, take certain examples and situations that I've been in in real life, but I'm also able to kind of translate that to, uh, or, or, you know, empathize and put myself in the character shoes and somehow cross relate the two and, and kind of strike the balance in between, um, you know, what's real and what's not. That's what's really fun about the show I'm on now and the character I'm playing is, even though it's a fictional character, these are real, you know, stories, essentially, these are real, yeah. you know, situations that people have found themselves in. And I think that's one of the things that makes Kanan, but all of the characters on the show relatable is because you're really just watching people kind of deal with life and, and you know, deal with uh, consequences of actions that they've made. And that's, you know, that's just a universal law of it. Yeah. It's, you know, you and being rational in that moment, because a lot of these mm -hmm. things popping up, man, you better think on your feet or the consequences are going to catch you at the door, you know, Absolutely. one way or the other. And being so uh -huh. relatable and being able to relay those messages, man, I'm telling you, you are knocking it out the park. And if you had to find that exciting moment without giving too much away for this mm -hmm. finale, I need to know, I need the inside scoop without giving it away. But I need something uh -huh. before I let you go. I need something. This tea pipe and hot. Okay. Okay. What's up? What's up? <laughs> what should we be on the lookout for? Like, I know we're on the edge of our seats right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, the whole the whole show that is raising Canaan is about this family and you know how they're taking on the world. It's mm -hmm. literally the Thomases and the Starks against the world. And you're just gonna continue to watch how that story unfolds in terms of the consequences of the actions that everybody has put forth in terms of you know everybody trying to move towards this collective goal that rock is set up for this family and in this enterprise and this uh, you know the industry that they're in you're just gonna watch them struggling with you know th there's the internal conflict of how all of these different moving pieces inside this one big machine want to handle this one situation in front of them. Right. And you have the constant butting of those heads because you know, there's so many different approaches to this one goal, but that won't always work. That's why you have to have somebody in charge who's leading the pack, telling, delegating people. Uh, and that's who Rock is. And you're going to see her just juggling all of that. You're going to see her kind of, you know, trying to flip through all of these different pages and wear these different hats uh -huh. and put out all these different fires. You're going to see Kanan, um, you know, kind of just wrestling and struggling with all of the choices he's made throughout this first season and, and watching how that, you know, unfolds for him and what that turns him into, as well as Jukebox. That's why it's called Raising Kanan. You know, you're that turn him into 
you know, the, the person we saw in the original power. We started with Kanan as this, this young, you know, just naive uh, child. And throughout the season, you watched him kind of grow. He's made cups every now and again, but you've watched him learn from those and, and uh, uh, you know, move forward accordingly. And that's what you're kind of just going to watch happen throughout the rest of the, the season. Well, you know what? We're amped. We're ready. We're here for it. On the edge of our seats. I'm super excited. You know, I'm going to be rooting for you. Like, that's my dog. What's up? What's up? I'm so proud of you. And as soon as outside <laughs> continues so to open up and you make a field trip to Louisiana, you make the field trip. I got you covered on some etouffee, some beignets, and some snowballs. Say right? less. Oh, we on the way. Oh, <laughs> on the way. Like it's that. a field trip. And thank you so much. <laughs> and Godspeed. I'll see you soon. <laughs> yeah. Thank you.